The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Well, as we head into the month of July, what are we looking at in terms of that weather forecast? Let's talk about it. Joining us now, Eric Snodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions for our weekly weather update. Eric, good to have you back with us. And obviously, uh, ending the month of June here with, uh, we've seen some storms, we've seen some heat, obviously. Uh, A lot has been happening. What's your uh, summary, I guess, of the month of June and where things are headed as we start a new month. Yeah, it's kind of a tale of two halves. And really, if you go back to mid-May through about mid-June, so much of the heat was way down south or in the western United States. And there's been some substantial drop building in the Pacific Northwest specifically. Uh, But then as we worked our way into that third and then now the final week of June, most of the Midwest saw expansive long-duration heat, right? I mean, if I look back the last 10 days or so, Especially at the overnight low temperatures, there were numerous climate reporting districts in the Corn Belt over toward the Northeast that had their hottest nights over that stretch of time period on record. And we worry about those hot nights mainly in July and August. So there's big questions about where that's going to end up uh, during that time frame. But yeah, it, it was um, what a what a change with all this heat coming in. Now it's interesting, Jesse. You know, I, I mentioned the drought issues that are in the Northwest. Uh, I, I have people daily that call and text and email and, and they'll, I'll, I'll have two back-to-back emails. One that says, hey, where's your drought? I thought you said we had risk of drought this summer. And yeah, back in January, February, March, we, we, there was risk. It was, it was a risky year, 60%. And they're like, where's this drought? You know, I'm in Missouri and it's pouring the rain here. And then I got a guy from Illinois calling like, hey, man, this is the worst drought I've seen in a long time. You know, And, and that's, that's the way it's been. It, it's been a, a summer so far of just uh, very high ranges in precipitation. And it seems as though if you've landed some of those rainfalls, you've got you've gotten a tremendous amount of rain. I mean, it's pouring the rain right now in Kansas. Uh, and, and yet I've got people in Nebraska, people in Oklahoma that have been like, man, just bring some of that our way. And uh, that's been the case, right? It's been very uh, high ranges, major disparity in the precipitation. I'm actually getting tired of saying the word disparity, but that, that's, the, that's the descriptor I can use to tell you that. This has been a summer of the, the, the haves and the have-nots. So, Jesse, the question is, where do we go in July? And I think that's going to be a hard one to answer. Well, and it's one that I'm still going to ask you about, even if it's going to be a hard <laughs> one to answer. But, you know, I, I've kind of noticed some of this here as of late, uh, as uh, someone who's been parked under this heat dome, you know, some of these yeah. like pop-up kind of showers and thunderstorms and you know, not really any method to it, just kind of uh, – areas finding enough moisture to spawn a few storms i mean is that something and we've seen that before time and time again is that the kind of weather pattern you see here over the next few weeks ahead i mean what are we looking at as we get into the middle of july yeah i think that's what's going to be the case so here's the top thing to watch there's two components to this whole atmosphere pattern one was the incredibly wet spring that the mid-south had uh, and uh, the, the you know the Ohio Valley all the way down to the Red River Valley in the south. So there's there's moisture in the soil that's still there. Um, the second piece is the Bermuda High. Now it sat up over Nashville uh, recently, and that's why it got so very hot. In fact, it's still part of it's still sitting there, but it is one of the most expansive Bermuda high pressure systems I've ever seen. So some of that high pressure is in the southeast and over toward the mid south. Some of it's in the central Atlantic, and some of it's all the way over to the Azores. That's a large area of high pressure. So you say, what does that mean? Well, because the Bermuda High is so expansive, we've not, you know, we've not gone without Gulf moisture during this time frame. So you've gotten these disorganized, messy clusters of storms that have moved through, uh, and we've not shut it all off. But I'll tell you, Jesse, we were so close to having major, major problems this spring on the drought side of things versus the flood given how cool the ocean temperatures are in the Pacific and really along the California coast, which is, by the way, going through a major, major wind event uh, just this past week and, and now into early this week. Uh, so we were, we were so close to these issues, and yet they just did manifest themselves. So what I'm watching in July is momentum. So the atmosphere we measure it all the time, it's, it's momentum relative to the Earth's momentum. And Jesse, it's low. And, and that low momentum is a scary thing in summer because it gives us great big long waves. 
And long waves in the atmosphere tend to stall or even retrograde, which means you tend to get stuck in patterns for 10 or 15 days rather than having them break up every, you know, five to seven days. And I, I just, I, there is some concern that this is going to be a hot July and we know that we can heat stress a crop pretty easily, especially if you've missed some of these rains. I mean, you and I have a good friend, Matt Bennett, right? So Matt and I were talking, you know, spring couldn't shut off the rain for him. And he calls me on Sunday evening. He's like, bud, I'm so, he always, do you call you bud all the time? He calls he me does. bud all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he's like, bud, when is, uh, w- w- when are you going to bring back some rain? Man? Like I am, we are cooking this crop on the lighter soils down here. And it's just amazing to see how fast the hydrologic cycle is, right? It gave him way too much, and now he he, you know, he, he needs to get it back. And that's going to be the case for a lot of folks, which just has me thinking, you know, what's the true size of this crop? Is Iowa carrying the country right now? Um, and, 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 you know, those are all big questions we're going to try to answer in July. But I'll just tell you this, the lack of momentum in July in the northward displacement of the jet has me concerned. And it's not just here, Jesse. It's around the world. How about around the world, since you brought it up? Let's go over to Europe and Black Sea region more. There's been plenty of focus on weak conditions in Russia, for instance, and across Europe, et cetera. What are some things you're tracking on that side of the world right now, Eric? Yeah, you know, so for the last, uh, you know, 20, almost 30 days, Europe has been in, uh, much of Central Europe especially, has been under the risk of rapid drought development. It's been very hot still is hot there, and they've had very limited thunderstorm activity. Now, day four through 10 in the forecast is attempting to return some storms to Central Europe, but this is not the kind of drought-breaking rainfall, but there will be some cooler weather, just trying to break a little bit for them, uh, but the question is, is, does it last, or do they go back into this, this, this risky pattern going forward? Over toward Ukraine, the eastern half versus the western half of Ukraine has been quite different. The western half has been dry. The eastern half has been stormier and wetter, and that leads you into the Black Sea region, which has had cooler weather and stormier weather now for, um, you know, a while. Well, really, I should say the eastern side of the Black Sea region, so more of like, uh, you know, the Russian wheat belt. So big questions, again, I know I keep saying that, Jesse, but this is that pivotal month, July. July makes or breaks so many crops, and we need to talk every week about where it's going and where it's been. What about in China? You mentioned this to me, some concerns there as well. What are we watching? Well, if you look at the longer range forecast for China through the month of July, I've got the models showing rains in the Manchurian Plain and North China Plain, but they are bone dry along the Yangtze River, in fact, the entirety of it. And that's a major river system that has tremendous amount of, of agriculture surrounding it. If that is the case, and we do see problems there, then it's going to be a story that's probably going to creep up on the national stage, or the international stage, excuse me, uh, as we go forward. So keep a close eye on the Yangtze River Basin going through the month of July. And also South America, I should ask as well. We've heard a lot of talk about frosts and freezes in parts of Brazil and Argentina, but it doesn't sound like it's had much of any impact on corn or even winter wheat. No, and it, it wouldn't. I mean, it's one of the things about South America, like <laughs> it is, by the way, the equivalent of their January, right? So, so it's, uh, it's the middle of winter for them, very dry season. Uh, the, the reality is they're trying to harvest that Sabrina crop, which is coming out of the ground. It's going, but it's, um, you know, it, it, it's nothing alarming down there yet. What I'll be concerned about, Jesse, is if we get later into August and I don't see good rains coming into like the late winter time frame for Argentina and Southern Brazil, then we're going to start to have a narrative on, you know, late winter, early spring drought issues to talk about, but it's not, uh, it's not showing up as a dominant signal yet. All right, Eric, any other final thoughts you'd share with us here for this week's update? I'm, I'll just say this. If the forecast models like the European have it right for July, I think that there's a large section of Central North America that is not going to be receiving the rainfall that it saw in, um, you know, in May and June. And the loss of momentum has me concerned, which means if we talk another week from now, and my first thing I mentioned to you is we've lost more momentum in the atmosphere, I start to get concerned about that. Because then you go from, you know, one side of the spectrum where you've been so wet in places 
to then uh, steaming the crop and then drying it out. And July is the month where cooler and wetter tends to produce massive yields. And what I'm telling you is I think July is going to be hotter. And I'm just worried about the central stripe from the Canadian prairie all the way down to Texas as being a drier swath. Now, not everywhere in there, but it's just a drier region that we have to be on the lookout for. Well, I know folks can go to agweather.com, ag-wx.com for more information. Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Always good to hear from you, Eric. Thanks for joining us again this week. You bet, Jesse. Have a good one. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube.